Michael and I had gotten to know each other uh, a, a couple of years before that. We were over in Japan playing an, an exhibition game there for the NFL, and he was representing the Falcons, and uh, I was there representing the Colts, and we talked a lot about life and going forward, and I never thought I would see him in, in that situation in prison. And I just asked him, basically, what happened? tell me how you got here. And it was interesting because he said a lot of things led up to it. He told me he was raised the right way. His mom had him in church. He knew about the Lord. But when he became the number one pick in the draft and he had exceeded even his own expectations, uh, a lot of that left him. And, and he said, I, I left that narrow path and got on the wrong road. And uh, it was just... Uh, that's what we talked about. And then, and then it was how to get back on the right road and how to do some of the things that he still wanted to do in life. How did you help him do that, get back on that right road? You know, we, I just asked him what he thought about in prison, what was going on in his life. He told me about the days being there, how he would try to work out and he didn't, didn't have much equipment. He wanted to stay in shape and he's throwing balls to, to other prisoners and uh, just trying to you know do what he could to stay on board athletically. But more than anything, he thought about his priorities and, and what he really wanted to do in life. And uh, as we said in that, that clip, he told me he wanted to show people he was not a bad person, uh, even though he had done some, some awful things. Um, and so that's what we really concentrated on. And that's all the message that I wanted to get across to people I knew in the NFL. I was probably the only person who had seen him and talked to him at that time. So people were asking me, what's going on with him? What is he thinking? What, what do you think? And all I wanted to get across was, this is a young man who I, I really believe wants to do the right thing. And if somebody gives him a second chance, I believe he will. You know, Tony, many people still see Michael Vick as someone who shouldn't be praised, who shouldn't be welcomed back in the NFL because of the things that he did to dogs, that in some ways he's not worthy of lauding in that way and, and bringing back into the spotlight in terms of the NFL. What do you think when you hear that sentiment? It, it's uh, hurtful, and, and I, as a Christian, I believe that everybody deserves a second chance if they're truly repentant. But I know how society is, and I've seen it. Uh, we have a charity down here in Tampa where I live that I work with all pro dads. And we've had people call in and tell me and, and tell our charity they are no longer supporting all pro dad because I supported Michael Vick, and he's a dog killer. And you, you want to say to people, yes, he did that, but look what's happening now. Look at all the good things that are coming out of this. And yes, we're all disappointed about what happened, but can't we look forward? Uh, so I, I know how it is, and I know what the Eagles went through when they signed him, and uh, that's one of the reasons I was really happy for Andy Reid winning this Super Bowl, because Andy took a chance, and his reputation was at stake, and he had a lot of people, met way more people than I did, uh, call him and talk to him and saying, how can you do this? And, and he was saying, this is a life. This is a young man, and I want to help him. And the Eagles did that. Andy did that. And it, it was sensational. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.